Welcome. This video is going to summarize the March 2018 Global Climate Report from NOAA. It turns out that March 2018 was the fifth warmest March on record. It was 0.83 degrees centigrade above the 20th century average. This despite the fact that there was a La Nina still in progress, which is a generally a cooling trend demonstrated by this blue area in the Eastern Pacific. However, uh, there are a lot of areas that are showing record warm temperatures, shown by these dark red squares. Dark blue indicates record cold temperatures and there are no pixels on this plot that have that color. So this indicates that we still have a warming planet. Well, let's take a look at the time histories of both land and ocean, northern and southern hemisphere. On the left, you have the land and ocean. The land was the seventh warmest, the ocean was the fifth warmest, and when you sum those together, that becomes the fifth warmest uh, global temperature on record. If you look over on the right, we have the two hemispheres separated. The northern hemisphere was the fifth warmest, and the southern hemisphere was the ninth warmest, and overall, again, it was, it was the fifth warmest March on record. Let's take a look at the same data, but for the first three months of the year, rather than just for March. This was the sixth warmest January to March period on record. It was 0.74 degrees centigrade above the 20th century average, which is a little bit cooler than the average for March. Here's the equivalent plot that I showed you to for March, but for this uh, three month period. And you can see that the La Nina in the Eastern Pacific is still there and probably a little bit more ten intense and, and widespread and there are fewer higher record temperature pixels on this plot than there were for the March one. This would indicate that March is slightly warming uh, above this average for the first three months. So it seems to be signaling the end to this cooling La Nina part of the ENSO cycle. If you look at the daily record temperatures from various weather stations around the globe, you find that there were 27,000 record highs set and 21,000 record lows sets. So that means there was about 30% more record highs than record lows, which also would indicate a warming planet. To show you how extreme the weather has been over the last five years, I have put this table together. The numbers in each box here is the rank that that month was at the time. So, for example, if we go to May of 2014, that was a new all-time record for May. If you go to 2015, you see that there are nine months here that re uh, set new all-time high records, including May. 2016, you have another eight months that were all-time records. 2017, you have a lot of second and third place finishes, even though we're now into a La Nina, a cooling cycle. Uh, 2018, that continues. In fact, there's only three months out of all of these that are not in the top five and only one that's not in the top 20. And I'll remind you that if you have 130 data points, the average temperature is going to be ranked something like 65. So even the coolest ranked month here is in the top 15% of all uh, months uh, that are on record. Well, let's take a look at the upper atmosphere. First, we'll start with the lowest troposphere. That's an altitude of about four kilometers and Two main groups that do this analysis, the University of Alabama, Huntsville and RSS, they both get very similar values for the anomaly of about 0.23 degrees centigrade, but they rank it slightly differently. UAH as sixth warmest and RSS as the ninth warmest. They both have very similar long-term trends of, of a warming trend of 0.13 degrees centigrade per decade. This, by the way, is the satellite data. Next, the mid troposphere. There's lots of groups that do this analysis. But let's take a look at UAH and RSS only again. Again, they find very similar anomalies of 0.15 and 0.16 degrees centigrade and rank them very similarly as well as the 9th warmest and the 11th warmest respectively. Now, the mid troposphere is about 7 to 10 kilometers up in the atmosphere and you'd expect there that the warming trend would be somewhat less and it is. It's about 0.08 degrees centigrade per decade. Finally, let's take a look at the stratosphere. Here we find a cooling trend. The numbers that each group gets are somewhat different. UAH ranks this as the coolest march on record. RSS is the third coolest march on record. Again, their long-term trends are very similar at about minus 0.23 degrees centigrade per decade on average. 
So what are we seeing? We're seeing a strong warming trend at the surface. We're seeing a slightly less strong warming trend in the troposphere, about four kilometers up. In the mid troposphere, we're seeing a yet a cooler trend of about 0.08 degrees centigrade per decade. And in the stratosphere, we're seeing a cooling trend of about 0.23 degrees centigrade per decade. And that is exactly what the anthropogenic global warming models would predict. We hear lots about how sea ice is growing and no it's not and so on. So let's actually find out what's going on with that. The northern sea ice extent for March of 2018 was the second lowest on record. So it's continued to this downward trend of about minus 0.26% per decade. In the southern hemisphere, the story is somewhat different. It's the sixth lowest on record, well below the average shown with this green line. However, there's a slight upward trend over the years of about 0.27%. Overall, global sea ice was at its third lowest on record and is showing an overall downward trend. Well, let's see what's going on with the ENSO cycle, the El Nino Southern Oscillation. That's the variation between El Nino and La Nina. At the moment, you can see there's a large blue area in the uh, Eastern Pacific, which is an indication of that there is a La Nina in still in progress. It seems to be weakening slowly, and they're talking about neutral conditions by the end of the spring. What does the future hold? Well, currently we're in weak La Nina conditions, as you can see from this plot. However, the models shown by all these various colored lines mostly show an increase in the warming trend in the Pacific. Uh, that red line is the average of all the models. And so that says we should be in neutral conditions fairly soon and in El Nino conditions, possibly by the end of the year. So we would expect a strong warming trend over the next eight to nine months. Let's see what the sun is doing. This is the daily sunspot number in yellow. The blue is the monthly sunspot number and the red curve is the 13 month average sunspot number. And as you can see since the bit the middle of 2014, the sunspot number has been sliding towards solar minimum. It's not there yet. It's got about another year before it gets there and may remain in solar minimum conditions for about a year, perhaps even two and then should start pulling out into solar cycle 25. There's nothing strange here. This is a perfectly normal, if somewhat low cycle, and we can expect uh, solar cycle 25 to start in 2021. There's no indication that we're going into a grand solar minimum. So in summary then, March 2018 was the fifth warmest March on record, and the first three months of the year were the sixth warmest such period since records began. All this despite the fact that we have La Nina conditions still persisting. That indicates that the globe is still warming. And there's nothing to indicate that the sun is doing anything unusual and is likely to go into a grand solar minimum anytime soon. So until next time, goodbye.